This false teacher literally says you can pay for God to cleanse you. I'm showing you when you honor God with your finances, you are placing a opening of your soul to his hand. You're saying cleanse me from all unrighteousness. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology. popular uh, quite a few years ago uh oddly enough he lives in the dallas area just like me um yes a few years ago he was very popular because he was proclaiming to be jesus in the flesh matter of fact his followers were claiming he was jesus in the flesh um and it is largely what many have called and i agree a woman cult why do we call it a woman cult is because go look on his facebook right now go type in joshua holmes go look at his friends list Go look at the people commenting, watching his videos. They're largely women. Um, I would say like 90, 95 percent women. And that's not just the problem. These women actually adopt his last name. So it'll be like Susan Holmes. And, and, and it's like it's like 40, 60 women calling themselves probably more than that. They take on his last name very strange but that's not why we're here today. Uh, many people have talked about that. I saw a video of his recently. And of course, you know, he's all flashy. He likes to be flashy, right? He, he's, he's very into the, the tithing myth, right? That if you give 10%, God will give you uh, 100% and you'll be rich, right? Uh, that's what he's uh, into. And so we're going to look at a video where he's talking about that. And there, this might be one of the worst. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> I'm laughing already because I know what he says. Uh, he, I'm not going to spoil it. Let's get into it. Because every addiction... Why Satan works through the law of addiction is because eventually an addiction, requ an addiction requires you to sow into it eventually. So he's saying, hey, you know, in order for you to have an addiction, uh, you got to give money. You know, you got to give some kind of tie. That's what he's meaning by seed. And we're going to see the parallel uh, that um, he's going to argue um, what he's saying, what he's going to argue, I'm just going to spell it out just in case you miss it here in a second is God has a tithe and Satan has a tithe. I mean, you won't find that in the Bible, even if you want to go to some old covenant practice. Now, let me just say what I believe uh, uh, Christians are to give. You are to give to your local church, but the Bible actually says we're to give freely, not under compulsion. As a matter of fact, not expecting anything in return, right? The pagans, the unbelievers, that's the, that's the reason why they give. We give freely. Um, there's no uh, law to how much we can give. Uh, there's no 10 percent. And then there's no anything about, well, if you give 10 percent, God's kind of hand is forced behind his back. So now he has to bless you abundantly. No, that is some genie in the bottle stuff, but not Christianity. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to listen to more of what he has to say because it's going to get bizarre. If a man like going to strip clubs. He can't go to the strip club without sewing. So if he's addicted to going to the strip clubs, he has to bring a seed when he goes. So I guess there's a seed of stripping. Um, bizarre analogy. I mean, technically, you could go to the, you know, the strip club and not actually, you know, spend money. Yes, uh, you probably get kicked out, but you could you could legal, you know, legal. It's not against the law. Uh, but strange analogy for a christian to be making uh as proof of why you should tithe and, and if you think that one was bad we're going to get into some more ones every addiction and sometimes the addiction is food it, have you ever studied how much money you pay for food in a month you'll be shocked how much you spend for food in a year but how is that a tithe? How is that a 10%? You're paying full price and you're getting a, a object, a, a, you know, something of value in return. So a lot of his analogies are, aren't going to make any sense. And they're like, wait a minute. But if that's true, doesn't that contradict? 
I know, I know we're thinking logically, we're thinking biblically, but let's keep going. Satan works through the law of addiction so that the money will go to the addiction and not to God. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Unfortunately. When the money goes to the addiction, you can't sow it because you done sold it into the addiction, into the habit, into the sin. And this is the secret of how Satan keeps you in sin. Let's hear it. Because you're honoring the yoke. So the reason why Satan is keeping you in sin, I mean, it had nothing to do with you desiring it and loving it, right? It's Satan that's keeping you there, right? <laughs> uh, the reason why Satan is keeping you, according to Prophet Joshua Holmes, is because you're giving a tithe to Satan or, you know, to sin, to that sin or habit or addiction, <laughs> This is this falls uh, abysmally short of what the Bible talks about man's sinful nature. You want to know why man stays in their sin? Come a little closer. It's because they crave it. They desire it. They want it. it. Has nothing to do with some kind of tithe you're giving. I mean, yeah, you're spending money on your your sinful habits because you desire it. Satan ain't keeping, let me just say something for the most part, because, you know, we, we have this Satan made me do it. This Satan, Satan is the reason why I'm doing my sinful behavior. For most of us, <laughs> Satan ain't the one tempting you. It's your own heart, your own evil desires. You don't have to blame Satan for why you're sinning. Just silly. And no, nowhere in the Bible is this law of attraction and, um, this sin, this this tithe or the seed you're giving to Satan. That yeah, none of this is in the Bible. So every time the money goes into the yoke, you coming into covenant with the greater depths of bondage and strangulation. Did you know that yokes went around the animal's neck? Your neck is a passageway where oxygen flows. That's why if somebody is choking, you'll see them grab their neck. If somebody uh, chokes out somebody, they go for their neck. So the neck is the area where life flows. So, I mean, the Bible says it's the heart. I mean, I, I, I don't know where he, he's getting any of this. It ain't the Bible. You know, this is what this is the whole God told me. I'm getting a special revelation from God outside of scripture. Right. None of this is in the Bible. He's talking about he's just making all this up. It may sound good to people who don't know anything. You know, so all those women who got your last name. But the, us who read our Bible, we're like, you, you know, we're, we're just saying we're saying things like this. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? What are you talking about, man? When there's a satanic yoke of addiction, that's how Satan stops life from flowing in a person. While that yoke is there, the life of God can't get to the person fully because that yoke is strangling them unknowingly. So I, I guess, you know, if, if there's some yoke on you, God can't get to it, right? He, has, he doesn't have the ability to break the yoke. I mean, yeah, I, mean I know the Bible says that. Um, but no, Joshua says, nope, God can't do it. I don't know if he's going to give some solution to how you break this, this yoke that God can't do, but Hey, this is his strange teachings. So every bad habit requires you to sow into it eventually. And so even Satan has used the seed principle to prolong your perversion. You know, I was thinking this while I was watching this video the first time. What about poor people? What about people who literally don't have money to sow into their bad habits? Are they more righteous, less sinful than the millionaire who has the ability to, uh, you know, obtain his sinful purchases see this is where this kind of breaks down this is this because the bible talks about the sin actually 
manifests itself in the heart. You can sin and not spend a dime. <laughs> How do you, you know, let, let, let's go with this sin, hate. You don't have to, that, that is all free, sir. You can have a, a hateful addiction, addiction of hate, an addiction of lust, and not spend a dime on any of these things. See, uh, Mr. Joshua here has a bad view of sin because it's all outward. It's all what you do outwardly. None of these sins he's talking about are, you know, inward. You can have an addiction of sin and it all be in the mind. So how do you sow a seed to that? Right. Wow. Hello. Satan <laughs> uses the seed principle to extend your bondage. Extend your prison stay so that you can remain in prison to yokes, things. Are you hearing me? Unfortunately. It requires you to sow. Nobody has ever went to the casino and gotten a large sum of money without pitting money in the casino. If you actually hear what he's arguing, he's saying, and this is exactly the tithe lie, right? It is, it is gambling. <laughs> It is gambling under the name of God. You give your 10 percent, quote unquote, right? And you will get back. You'll hit the jackpot, spiritually speaking. Well, not spiritually speaking, physically speaking, right? He's actually comparing tithing to gambling, which I agree that is a valid analogy because <laughs> that's exactly what it is. But it's unbiblical, right? We know we're not to gamble. You know, and, and here's how it, the analogy falls apart. You don't win every time you go to the casino. And that's exactly, I would argue, you have a better chance of winning at the casino than you do, uh, you know, getting what they promise in the tithing line. The same way nobody has ever won the lottery without taking money and giving it to the lottery. Again, this is more, uh, hey, again, the comparison is, right, if you sow to sin, you'll get more sin. And, and I agree with that principle. He's obviously talking uh, financially, right? The reason, you know, so he's making the comparison, right? You have to sow into us to something monetarily to get back that, you know, seed, that that habit, that uh, anointing or not anointing, that seed, that seed, that sin, that habit, that addiction. In the same way, spiritually speaking, in order to be blessed, rich, prosperous, you have to give a seed. You, you see that? And again, it is a gamble. This is exactly what I'm speaking about. So there is a, a hidden code to yokes. Hidden code. Because when Satan is working with the law of habits, the law of addiction, the law of yokes, what Satan does is Satan brings you into a sowing of the yoke. If anybody has bondage to anything, watch how much money you put into it. I mean, maybe, but some people don't. I mean, you know, there's some people who, uh, again, like I said, this kind of excludes the people who are poor. Again, you don't have to spend a dime for hate. I mean, there are some people who have all their sins in their mind, in their heart, but they, it doesn't necessarily manifest itself outwardly. Have you ever watched 600 Pound Life? Don't. I promise you that the 600 pound person is sowing money into food daily. So they can't overcome the compulsion, the yoke that Satan placed on them to always be hungry, always want to eat, always want them. Because their seed has gone into that yoke. So it's hard for them to stop doing the compulsive eating because they have sown so much seed into it. And every time they sowed the seed, they gave the yoke power to remain in authority over their choices 
and over their schedule. See, even Satan uses sowing to keep man on the pathway to hell. Even Satan knows if I'm going to get anybody to go to hell, I need them to sow into this. <laughs> so so the reason why they're, uh, you know, uh, addicted, uh, you know, let's call it what it is, gluttonous. It's not because their heart desires it. It's because they've sown into this. And now they have this yoke, a bondage on them. And this is Satan's principles. So again, you don't have to. Again, let's say someone. What if someone gave them all this food? Would it then be sowing into it? They still would be sinning. Right. Being gluttonous is a sin. No, it's not talked about a lot. But you, again, this is why I say you actually don't have to spend a dime to be a rebellious, God-hating sinner. You don't have to spend a dime. But if he's turning, he's now right. He's manipulating this tithing lie that people teach and saying, "Well, that uh, that law, uh, you know, that seed principle operates the same way with Satan. If you give a seed a ten percent principle, then you will." Uh, you will uh, reap bountifully your sin. <laughs> My goodness, this is silly. <laughs> that was not deep enough for that. Satan whistle. copies God even down to the T of the seed. If you want to go to a basketball game, a football game, you notice you got to sow a seed to sit in the seed. <laughs> that is not a seed you're sowing. That is a uh, a purchase for a, uh, you know, you, you are spending revenue to get a product, to get entertainment. But there's no, there's no, you're sowing a seed. You know, let you know. Say, let's say you spend a hundred dollars for a game, and then the principle is you will receive, you will receive a thousand dollars in revenue back. Guess what? There's only the, the the people making the money is the management. It's kind of like you know, you want to compare this to a pyramid speed pyramid scheme. The people at the top actually are the ones benefiting. Yeah, you get your you know entertainment, but that's about it. I don't see how this is actually comparable, even in a this put like this. This is these are the comparisons I would make <laughs> for you guys. This is exactly what it's like. You you get a, you know, and, and, and let's just say this. This is even taken into consideration. What if you bought the tickets and you're the losing team? <laughs> right. You're like, man, this was worth it. Your team gets blown out. Was that I mean, did you so? into a bad ministry again the this is why we should stick with the what the bible says because none of this is making any lick of sense you can't go to the baseball game and say hey i came here to watch the game they're going to say where's your ticket if you want to go on a flight right now you go to the airport they won't even let you pass tsa it's a new meaning to a down payment of the spirit right <laughs> He's paying down to the spirit, right? No. Uh, again, you're buying a ticket to reach a destination. That does not work, spiritually speaking. I, I thought Jesus paid it all, right? <laughs> Apparently he didn't. We have to sow a seed to get to the destination we want. You see how these analogies he's bringing up actually contradict plain biblical teaching? If you don't got a boarding pass... What is really a boarding pass? It is the evidence of your seed. <laughs> no, it's you bought a ticket. It, 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 he's trying to spiritualize buying a ticket. You think you think uh, you think the owner of spirit cares about a seed and what you're going to go do when you land? No. So are Christians who buy when he goes and flies, is he now sowing? A seed into the ministry of American Airlines. My goodness. What is he? No, 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 no. This is silly. Everything in this life. It requires some type of investment 
for you to access it. You know, everything he said so far has required silliness. And <laughs> he paid zero dollars to teach this. I told you Solomon wasn't sowing for money. Solomon was sowing to be delivered from the yoke of confusion. Wow. Solomon was sowing seed to be delivered from the yoke of confusion. Do you actually hear what he's saying? The reason Solomon was giving is to gain wisdom. So apparently you can buy the things of God. Simon the sorcerer, Peter, you were wrong apparently. Because all Simon was trying to do was, uh, you know, sow a seed to get the gifts of God. Peter, you, you were not operating in the principle of God. Now, obviously, I'm being facetious because that would be Mr. Joshua's argument back to Peter. You cannot buy the things of God. You can't buy wisdom. Matter of fact, the Bible literally says that <laughs> you can't buy wisdom. But apparently all you need is a seed. And that's how, uh, you know, Solomon got so wise. Solomon was sowing seed to get delivered from the yoke of confusion. I don't know how to judge your people. I don't know the decisions to make. So I'm a soul because I need to break this yoke off of my soul. Satan doesn't want me to find out exactly what pleases God. I'm in a place where my brain is playing tricks on me. I, I'm assuming uh, sometimes I believe this right, but there's a way that seemeth right to a man. It was Solomon that wrote in Proverbs, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is death, which means that Solomon understood the deception of the serpent that you could believe that everything is right about this is okay is innocent but it leads to death because Satan is behind it so Solomon was sowing to break yokes oh and let me just say this because uh, I I, I, I uh, know people will try to bring this up, like buy the truth and sell it not <laughs> as if uh, Solomon was talking about uh, financial buying. No, uh, we invest in this truth. Right. We obtain it again. You can't li you can't literally pay for truth. That's that that's silly that someone would even try to argue that you literally cannot pay God to get wiser. Right. If that's the case, where, where did Jesus, right? Where did Jesus uh, pay for any of this wisdom? Where did Paul pay for this wisdom, right? So, just in case someone tries to bring that up, Solomon was sowing because Solomon recognized that the enemy had targeted his soul so that God's will would not be clear in his soul. So that God's wisdom would not be clear. So what did he name and see? I'm sowing. I want wisdom and I want understanding. Which means that Solomon had misunderstanding and foolishness in his soul. Because if you ask for something, that means that the complete opposite of what you're asking for is in operation. So if you ask him for wisdom, that means that you identified your foolishness. If you ask him for understanding, that means that you have identified your confusion, your misinterpretation. So Solomon was using the seed to create a covenant of freedom because he identified and recognized the covenant of bondages. That so apparently you, you can buy a covenant of freedom. Hey, um. You know, to be free, uh, apparently it costs. It does cost, you know. Jesus paid it all. Not quite. Not quite. Apparently, you know, Joseph, uh, Joseph, <laughs> Joseph Smith, Joshua Holmes, same thing, right? Apparently, Joshua Holmes is, you know, saying, hey, no, you, you, you want freedom. You want wisdom. You got to buy it. You you literally got to sow a seed. And, you know, when when, the, when these prosperity gospel pimps talk about sowing seed, they, they, they use that synonymous, synonymous with giving or a tithe. Satan was using in his life. And I told you, if you ever investigate any bondage that you ever had in your life, 
You had to sow money at one point to keep on engaging it. You could I can tell you this. <laughs> I've I've got many of my sins for free. And, 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 and let's be honest. A lot of people gave us these things as well. So how does that work? I didn't mean so a C4 that some people have given you uh, access to the sins you already wanted. You know, it's like, it, again, you don't have to pay for sin. It already is brewing. What, what, what does James talk about sin? <laughs> right. Matter of fact, let me read this passage in James uh, because he talks about how sin um, comes about. Is it by giving this seed? No. Is it by, you know, putting a down payment on stuff? <laughs> you know? No. Um, let's look at look at this. Uh, James 1 14 he says but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire now he was talking all about Satan and you know you know giving you this addiction keep you none of that's in this passage then desire when it, it's when it as conceives gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully grown brings forth death you don't my friend no seed necessary according to James they keep on engaging you couldn't keep on engaging the yoke unless you paid some type of money. Strange, bizarre man. At one point, everybody that will ever... Wait, hold on a second. So, hold on. Let, let, let me hear that again. Hold on. He you couldn't something. keep on engaging. You couldn't keep on engaging the yoke unless you paid some type of money. Okay, that is stupid and that is silly. What he's arguing there is you couldn't, the yoke is the sin. And he's literally arguing you couldn't keep on engaging the, the yoke, the sin, unless you keep giving money. So apparently the solution to stopping sinning is being broke. <laughs> You see, you see how that actually works against them. All the prosperity gospel pimps would be out of out of a job. No, my friend, money is not the problem. Whether that's rich or poor, the problem is your own wicked heart. Having less money ain't going to stop you from sinning. It may stop you from obtaining uh, the manifestation, the outward outwardness of that. But it's not going to stop you from sinning. Remember, sin, according to James, is in the heart first. Wow. At one point, everybody that will ever encounter any yoke from Satan You'll recognize at one point you'll be giving your money to that yoke somehow. You'll be giving your time to that yoke somehow. You'll be giving your moments, your schedule over to that yoke somehow. Like false doctrine. So there's an angle to the seed that Adam was operating in, in Genesis, because while he's sowing seed, even though there's a yoke right in the midst of the garden, he's not paying no attention to the yoke. The yoke has no interest for his. Yeah. So what what's when did Adam give a seed? In the original sin, when did he give like literal? you know, money to the sin. See, that example actually backfires on him because he did. He, he, I mean, he just literally, well, his wife partook, right? And then he partook as well. She didn't say, hey, before you get this fruit, right, that God said not to eat, we're going to need some cash for this. We need some seed. He, he, he just ate. So, he has no appetite. He has power over the yoke. 
He's walking around that yoke every day and he not having one issue, one struggle. I'm showing you when you honor God with your finances. You are placing a opening of your soul to his hands. <laughs> so the opening of our soul to his hands is rooted in our honoring of finances. And, and, and what, what he means is giving seed, you know, the tithe said nowhere in the Bible. But none of this has actually been in the Bible. Out of her life. <laughs> Out of her life. None of what he's been saying is Bible. Yeah, I mean, he may say Adam, he may say God, you know, some Bible characters, right? Some people in the Bible. But this is false doctrine. Then cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Oh, hold on. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Did he say what I think he said? You are placing a opening of your soul to his hands. You're saying cleanse me from all unrighteousness. <laughs> So now, apparently, you can pay for sanctification. You can pay to be cleansed of all your sins. Literally. Apparently, that's what the, the seed, the finances, the honoring of the finances is for. For God, giving him the, uh, the, the granting, the ability, whatever language he wants to use, to say, he can cleanse us now. That's why I said. This is literally the down payment of the spirit he's talking about. Deliver me. <laughs> Not in a, uh, you know, biblical sense. I'm talking about he's literally trying to down. He's trying to pay for the things of God. From all evil. Lead me not into temptation. The Lord told the disciples to pray. Lead me not into temptation. Yeah. Pray, not pay. Why? Why? Why would you tell disciples, lead me not into temptation? It's an apostolic mystery you have here's why you should pray not to be led into temptation because you will be led in temptation <laughs> this is no apostolic mystery because we are tempted that's why you should pray <laughs> to pray to be delivered from evil you have to pray to be led not into temptation God wants to hear that you don't want the bondage. God wants to hear with your mouth. I do not want this. Take it from me. I don't want to sin against you. I want you to possess me so that I could do everything right all the time according to how you like it, Lord. This is the whole purpose of prosperity. <laughs> prosperity is the soul receiving God's will. Oh, wow. So prosperity, having money, having, you know, being prosperous, financially speaking, is the soul. Let's 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 hear that again. I want to take him out of context is the whole purpose of prosperity. Prosperity is the soul receiving God's will. Prosperity is the soul of receiving God's will. Said no Bible verse ever. Wouldn't that conclude that if you're prosperous, that's literally the person they've, they've received that they are, you know, willing to or done the will of God? Who knew? Bill Gates, Jay-Z. All these famous rappers, all these famous MA, they, that they they are proof positive, according to Joshua Holmes, that they are either doing or willing to do the will of God. This is asinine. This is when you know someone loves money. And it's his mindset and his thought life by force. That's what prosperity is. And when God sees that prosperity has rested in your soul, prosperity will rest in your finances. It will rest in your health. It will rest in your relationships. It will rest in your daily happenings. All of your experiences, all your encounters, all of your moments on earth will be uh, saturated with the oil of prosperity. Sir, may you and your money perish. As the apostle told Simon, this is a false teacher. His, I mean, what he taught in this video was just asinine and silly. 
but he's echoing a lot of though many prosperity preachers like grant don't go that far they will say similar things and it is the rooted in the tithing lie. I mean, you know, I want to do a video on the tithing lie soon, but the tithing lie is that if you sow to God, right, as if you can, you know, it's it's already his, right? Um, you know, we're not, you, you, again, God doesn't need your money. <laughs> you know, your neighbor does, your church does, but God doesn't need it, right? And so us giving money to the church doesn't, conjole god now to oh okay well now if they give 10 bucks i'll give them 100 you know that is silly that is silly again stay tuned for more to do with that hope you guys enjoyed this video till the next time grace and peace yo grace and peace thank you for watching another episode of all things theology if you enjoyed what you heard today go on and give me a like subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.